the ultimate test for any lens and camera is time. We can all make hasty assessments based on numbers and graphs, but in the end, the burning question is, does it take a decent picture? Several years ago, Olympus launched their Zuiko 12-100 Pro lens, and it is a favourite for many photographers, and has withstood the test of time. At first, its specification may not look special. Its widest aperture is only f4, but it is constant over its ten and a half times zoom range, not variable like many other zoom lenses. It has a very effective image stabilizer, and speaking from experience and not figures, when combined with the image stabilizer on my EM1 Mark II, handheld photos, yes, can be taken at long shutter speeds in low light that many photographers simply don't believe. Somebody once told me that it wasn't right. Oh, da, 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 no, 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 no. Now for the proof of the pudding. A selection of images, all handheld, so no tripod or filters, just camera and lens. They are taken between June 2022 and March 2023. They are saved to RAW with adjustments carried out in Adobe Lightroom. The first picture at item mode clearly demonstrates the advantage of this combination of camera and lens, and quite likely micro four thirds technology. Image stabilization, good depth of field at f4, and no dust on the sensor. The National Trust do not permit the use of tripods, so I had to hand hold. The Malvern Hills are one of my favourite areas because of their association with the English composer Sir Edward Elgar. Much of the success of this image is choosing the right day. Foreground interest adds the third dimension, and by placing it on the right, the tree acts as a full stop as we tend to read from left to right. Also, the ridge leading from the tree up to the Worcestershire Beacon, the highest point of the Malvern Hills, establishes the focal point. Again, this image clearly shows the excellence of the dual image stabilizers in both camera and lens. Every detail can be seen in that quiet ceiling, and yes, it is handheld at a sixth of a second. Need I say more? I often use program inside churches. Because of low light, the camera will by default use the largest aperture, and I can still add my personal settings, such as white balance and exposure compensation. Program is often mistakenly assumed as auto. It is not. There's a bit more light at null, but the camera has still resorted to the largest aperture, which, of course, can be checked in the finder before taking the picture. I understand that most sensors perform at their optimum best at 200 ISO, so I stick to it wherever possible. There is no point in bumping up the ISO unnecessarily, and anyway, publishers don't usually like high ISO images, especially if it wasn't necessary to do it in the first place. The joy of this image is the lack of people, even at Canary Wharf. However, I had to work quickly before someone walked into the frame. For that reason, much of the camera is still on auto, but as I am saving to RAW, it is easier to make changes in Adobe Lightroom later. I have tended to let the camera do the work with this image, using Lightroom for any necessary changes. I don't like tying my hands when taking a picture. Some control is sometimes required, but it is often a team effort with Adobe and in the comfort of home where you have more time. Now, this shot did require more control. I spot metered a highlight and corrected any dark areas of the image in Lightroom. Nevertheless, I let the camera sort out shutter speed and 
aperture, but notice I underexpose all of my shots by minus 0.3 EV. This is to avoid unintentional blown out highlights that can become difficult to control. This is just up the road from the last shot. You will find two other programs about this attractive area on my channel, Hannah Camille and Stain Street, a Roman road which the walkers are traversing. I love photographing places that have a place in our history or an artistic association. It gives the picture a reason beyond its appearance. This view became the inspiration for that evergreen melody by the Sleepy Lagoon by Eric Coates, which under these windy conditions might be hard to imagine. The rainbow is for real, not added in a computer. London has many fine churches that you can just enter and take pictures, but not St Paul's or Westminster Abbey. Usual technique about exposure. Spot the person, by the way. I did take it again, but I thought that I would show that I am no different to anyone else when trying to get a shot without people. Swings and roundabouts. They say that the best images are taken a mile from your home, so here is mine. Note that I am on aperture priority, so that I can use a small aperture, so why? When including the sun, even when partially hidden behind a tree, a larger aperture, particularly when using a zoom, will add unsightly flare to the image. The penalty, of course, is diffraction, but I consider unsightly flare to be a worse problem. So, swings and roundabouts? The answer is to use a prime lens for this type of demanding shot. The detail in this shot is breathtaking, handheld of course, relying on the advanced technology of Micro Four Thirds. I could have used HDR to balance the exposure of the rose window with the interior. Instead, I spot meat at the window, allowing the choir to be rendered underexposed, and then corrected in Lightroom. I prefer this approach as it gives greater flexibility and I can change my mind later. I have used the Zuiko 12-100 Pro lens as my workhorse optic since it was released. It covers a very useful range from a generous wide angle to quite a powerful telephoto. Not powerful enough perhaps for wildlife but useful for highlighting static detail. As said earlier, it has withstood the test of time. The 12 to 200 came close to a change in my affections, but for the time being, I see no need to make that change.